This video explains Packet Tracer 292 basic switch and end device configuration. We're given a topology diagram showing our network will consist of two layer 2 switches and two end devices. We're given some IP address information and a set of instructions. We are going to use the physical mode of Packet Tracer to install some equipment. Switch S1 is on the shelf. Click and drag that, drop it in the rack, and that will automatically connect it to power. Anytime you hover over one of these devices, it will show you what device it is. They're also labeled on the shelf there. Switch S2 is our other layer two switch. And we are going to use the two PCs, so move them from the shelf to the table side by side. That takes care of step A. On step B, we're going to power on the PCs. The two switches will power on automatically because they don't have power switches. Use the zoom in icon to get a little bit closer look if you like. There is a power button on the front of each PC, and you should see the light above it come on after you turn each of them on. And you have a completion percentage that should increment during most of these tasks. In step C, go to the cable pegboard and get our cables that we'll need to connect all of our devices, as shown in the diagram. To connect the two switches together, because they're the same type of device, convention is to use a copper crossover cable. Click on copper crossover, and again, when you hover over these, a label will come on showing you. When you click on it, it will change the mouse pointer to a connector icon, we want to connect Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on switch S1, as shown by the labeling, to the same port on S2. It's an odd numbered port, so it's in the top row there. The cable should appear showing that they are connected. To connect PCA to switch S1, we'll use a straight through copper cable because they're not the same type of device. So click on a straight through. Again, that pointer will change, and we're using F0 slash 6 on S1, which is on the second row there. And then that will connect to PCA's Ethernet port, which is there on the front. So that cable appears there. And for PCB's connection to switch S2, that's going to go on Fast Ethernet 0 slash 18 on S2. Click on the copper straight through cable, find fast ethernet 0 slash 18 on that second row there. And the other end is going to connect to the ethernet port on PCB. That brings us to step F. When you connect them at first, the port light would be in an amber state on the switch until the negotiation is completed, the connection is established, at which point you should see a green light for that corresponding port. And then as well at the PC side, we also have a green light indicating that all is well. So all the lights are now green on both sides of the connection. So we have our basic connectivity established. Next, we're having to configure static IP address information. And we'll start with the PCs. We do this because like the way we have to have a unique mailing address to receive mail or packages, a network device has to have a unique address as well to be able to receive communication and participate in the network. So we are going to assign these addresses that we've been given. On PCA, we'll click on the PC first, then desktop, then IP configuration. And where it says IP version 4 address, the one for PCA in the addressing table, you can either type it in or copy it and paste it in that field. Equally as important is the subnet mask. You click in the subnet mask field, it will auto-populate a default value, which does match the one we have been given, so no change needed there. The subnet mask is what tells the network what portion of the IP address is the network address and what portion is the unique host endpoint address. 
In this IP address, the first three octets of the IP address are the network portion. So the network is 192.168.1. These devices are all in the same network, so they can talk to each other without a router. Routers allow different networks to communicate with each other. Repeat the previous steps to assign the IP address information for PCB. We were told to leave the default gateway blank at this time because there's no router attached to the network. So on PCB, desktop, IP configuration, the IP address is the same except for it's a dot 11 instead of a dot 10. Click on the subnet mask field. That looks good. Leave the default gateway alone and close that window. Next, we'll go back to PCA, desktop. There's an X here to close the IP configuration window. We want to get a command prompt so we can run a command called IP config, which you can run um, on a Windows device if you have one at home. We're going to add slash all so that we can see all of our information. And we want to confirm that our IP address and subnet mask line up with what we were given. This is going to give us also a lot of other information, such as the physical MAC address of the device. Now we want to test our network connectivity that we've cabled up. The ping command allows you to test network connectivity by typing an IP address after it, which is the IP address of PCB in this case, which is .11. And this will confirm and validate our network is working. This ping is successful and automatically sent for, they're called echo requests. Those went to PCB, PCB responded back with an echo reply. So we had 0% loss and 100% success. So that looks good. If the ping is not successful, check the configurations on both the PCs and troubleshoot as necessary. Next, we're going to work on our switches and get those configured. So we want to use a console cable. This light blue cable here is a console cable. And we'll start with switch S1. You have to connect this on the back of the switch. So hover over S1 and then right click, inspect rear, and click on the console port. And then at the other end, PCA, we will put that on the RS-232 port. And then that should show as connected. Once we've done that now, we will establish the console connection using what's called a terminal emulator program. So on the desktop of PCA, click on the terminal program, just accept the default settings by clicking OK. And we are now connected to the console port on switch S1, uh, configured with factory settings right now. So we want to make some changes. We see our prompt is a greater than sign, and we see the factory default name here. We are in user exec mode at this point, which is a limited set of commands that we can do. So to be able to configure the switch, we will need to change to privileged exec mode by typing the enable command. Or if you type en and tab, it will complete it. Or you can simply type en return. As you can see, the prompt has changed to the pound sign or hash symbol, which indicates that we're now in privileged exec mode, which is kind of similar to super user mode on a Linux device, which means we have more privileges. Now that we've elevated our privileges, we need to go into configuration mode by typing in CONF. And you can press tab or just type CONF space T. The prompt will change to show that we are now in global configuration mode. And we are going to, in step E, give the switch a name according to the addressing table. This is switch S1. The command is hostname, uppercase S1. And the prompt has changed to reflect the new hostname. In step F, we are entering local passwords to put a little bit of security in place. There are no passwords by default. 
we are to use lowercase class as the privileged exec password so that we limit access to the privileged commands. And then on the console, to be able to access that, we have a password of Cisco, all lowercase. Let's do the privileged exec password first. Type a question mark, it will show you what your options are. So ENA is unique. I can do a tab completion. Two options are either the password command for it to be in clear text in the running config or secret to have it encrypted in the running config. We'll use the secret keyword because that's more secure. Enable secret and the password is CLASS, -S, all lowercase. Going forward, that will be needed to be typed in prior to elevating privileges. To configure the password for console access, first go to the console by typing line con for console and then zero after a space. Password is the command and the password is Cisco. The command login must be configured as well for the password to be checked. So always put the two commands together, password and login on the console line. In step G, we have to also give the switches a unique IP address so that they can be managed over the network. We will do that on not a physical interface, but a switched virtual interface or SVI, in this case called VLAN 1. So I will exit back to config mode. And if you do a show IP interface brief command anytime on these switches, you would normally do that outside of config mode. So I'm typing the word do to be able to do it from config mode. That is where you can see your individual interfaces. So here is VLAN 1, which is currently administratively disabled. So we are going to not only address it, but we will also enable it. So there'll be two separate commands here for that particular interface. Interface space VLAN 1 to get into interface configuration mode, IP address, you can type AD tab or just AD, followed by the IP address for S1, which is 192.168.1.1, followed by the mask. Remember, you always have to have the mask hand in hand with that but we still see that it's administratively disabled. So we have to enable it by typing the command no shut, which is short for no shutdown. So we should see an indicator that that is coming up. The next thing is to configure a message of the day or login banner to indicate that this is authorized users only. So the command is banner space MOTD and then any character can be the delimiter to show the beginning and end of the message itself. So it has to be any character that's not in the message. So like you could use an asterisk at the beginning and the end of the message with the message in between. You could use a dollar sign. Again, any, any character that's not in the message itself, but authorized users only or something to that effect. Next, in step I, save the configuration. So you have to exit out. You can use end or exit. Go back to privileged exec mode. We want to copy the running configuration. You can say run or tab completion running dash config. That's the volatile current configuration. Star for short or startup dash config if you tab complete it. That will copy the configuration into the non volatile RAM so that if this is powered down and back up, it won't all be lost. Just accept the default file name. In step J, we can display the current configuration. Show run we can see that our enable can't be read easily like over your shoulder. It's encrypted because of the secret keyword. We can see an IP address on our VLAN 1 interface, our message of the day banner, our password and the login command on the console line. So there is how you would display that. 
In step K, display the iOS version and other useful switch information. This would be the command show version. That will show us things like the version number. It will show us information about what kind of switch this is and how many ports it has, just to name a few things. In step L, display the status of the connected interfaces on the switch. I showed that command a little bit ago, show IP interface brief. We can see that the ones that need to be up are up. And in step M, we're to close the configuration window and repeat all the things we just did on switch S2. So grab a light blue console cable, go to the back inspect rear on S2, connect one end to the console port and the other end to the RS-232 port on PCB, and we'll go to the terminal program on the desktop of PCB, accept the default settings, and this is S2. So if we go back for our previous steps, we started by changing the access mode to privileged using the enable command, and then go into configuration mode. Before I do that, though, I'll do the show IP interface brief. So you can see again, this is the status of the ports that are connected. Configuration mode, C-O-N-F space T. The host name in this case is S2 with an uppercase S. Step F is where we entered our local password. Enable secret class. And then on the console, line con zero, password Cisco, all lowercase. And don't forget the login command so that it actually checks for the password. Step G, configure an IP address on the switch on the interface VLAN 1. It's okay if you put it with or without the space before the 1. IP address, in this case, 192.168.1.2. Don't forget the mask, and don't forget to enable it using the command no space shut. Next comes the login banner. After you get the message that the line has come up, you can hit enter to get your prompt back if you need to. Banner space MOTD, and in this time I'll use the dollar sign as my delimiters for my message. Next, save the configuration, copy, space, run, for running config, to star, for startup config. And accept the default file name by pressing enter. At this point, the switch should be able to ping the other switch because they all have IP addresses now, and they're all in the same network. So S1 is .1. The first ping, if it fails, that's fine, or of the first two, it's doing something called ARP where it's finding out what is the MAC address that goes with that IP address, and you'll learn about that later. But if you do the ping again, it will be 100% successful once it's got that ARP out of the way to get that MAC address. To ping the two PCs, one is dot .10 and the other is dot .11. They are successful once they do the ARP. They're all replying back to the ping, so everything looks good on the network. Your completion rate should show 100%. If not, go under Check Results, Assessment Items. If you see anything that's not a green check mark, such as a red X, find what that corresponds to and go back in the instructions and do a little troubleshooting to see if you can correct that. Also, you can do a show incorrect item if you just want to see the incorrect items. Once you're satisfied with your completion rate, you've done everything, save the PKA file, file, save as, and you can change some of this to say completed or your name or something so that you know for sure that is the completed one that you're handing in. And that completes this packet tracer.